there and welcome to my intermediate acrylic painting lecture. Uh, this is the lecture that I give. When I first start the class, there are six lessons which you can see on free online art classes. And when I give the class here in my home and in my studio, I start with a lecture just to give the students some idea of what is what they are going to be learning and what the course entails. Most of the students that start the intermediate acrylic painting have gone through the beginning acrylic painting, six lessons, and you can find those on free online art classes as well. And then they have progressed into intermediate, so they have learned some really good painting skills, some drawing skills, and are ready to continue. Also, sometimes I get students that are just wanting to refresh their painting skills. And intermediate is a good place for them to start because even though they've done some painting, lots of times they haven't painted for a while, and they are not quite ready for an advanced class, although they may, their skills might be very good. So they settle into a more comfortable level working with a group of people that have painted with acrylics and are just ready to continue. So the first lesson in intermediate acrylic painting is kind of a refresher course. Um, we talk about the various materials that we will be using in acrylic painting. Um, we talk about the various brushes, the bristle brushes, the synthetic brushes, the shapes of them, the rounds, the, the flats, the squares, and all of this is also in the lesson on free online art classes. I talk about canvas board and wrapped paintings, wrapped uh, stretched canvas, and this is, this is more expensive than a regular stretched canvas that is stapled around the edge. And the student has to make a decision as to how, if they end up with a good painting, they're going to present it. If it's wrapped, it doesn't have to be framed. If it's stapled around the edge, it does have to be framed and that has to be covered. I don't really endorse working on acrylic paper. I find it's very thirsty and it sucks up the paint really fast and it's, it's hard to get some techniques done. So I say go and buy some various sizes of stretched canvases and canvas board. Canvas board is great because if you do come up with a good painting, if you're practicing and you come up with a good painting on canvas board, you can still... And then uh, material wise, we also talk about the quality of acrylic paint. There is a student quality and then there is a more professional quality. There is the flow type, which is very liquid, and then there is the the heavy body type that has a lot more, it's, it's a lot firmer as a paint. So we discuss that and we discuss the colors for the palette that we are going to be using. And it normally entails just what is involved with beginning acrylic painting, which is um, alizarin crimson, a cadmium red, cadmium, cadmium um, orange, uh, cadmium yellow, titanium or zinc white, uh, phthalo blue and phthalo green and permanent green and then uh, if, uh, purples or some sort of magentas. And that is a really good palette that will give uh, the student a lot of color to begin with. So then we're ready for lesson two after the materials uh, refresher lesson. We go on to uh, lesson two which is the still life. And I just simply set up a still life with various objects, usually five or six. It could be um, some pottery, a book, or mugs, um, um, that, that sort of thing, some drapery. Uh, so we set it up and, um, so that a good view is available to all of the students. And then we just go into the drawing technique of, again, refresher, um, and many times I find out that, that students, some have better drawing skills than others. So at this point, we really need to tack that down. And, um, and so the pencil gauge method, which is also in freeonlineartclasses.com, 
shows how you can use a pencil to locate the objects correctly. Um, I also just reintroduced the idea of the grid and how a grid can be used. And that also is a video that I have done called uh, Drawing What You See. And you might want to check that out before you even start the intermediate to give you an idea of what that technique is. So, uh, the second lesson is the still life, and we research uh, drawing and then putting the basic color down on the objects, filling the canvas with the color, and then going into light and shade and how to make shade and how to do the, the illumination. Most of the students at this point have done this, but it's really good to tack this technique down again before we start with lessons. The reason why it's so important to get that, that painted still life subject matter down is because lesson three involves working simply with black and white. And this makes the student, this particular technique makes the student ex extremely mindful of lights and darks and shading. And um, in, in this way, a student does not really deal with any more than two colors to promote volume in the subject matter. So um, the students I, uh, in lesson three work from a photo uh, of a landscape or they can work outside. Um, it's all just tonal contrasts and I talk about that. You can see this in lesson three in free online art classes. We go into that and there are examples there that show you how this technique is done. Also working with black and white um, makes students extremely mindful of composition, the dynamics of composition, how the objects in the composition create a, 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 a good experience for the viewer. And this is important because this particular composition knowledge goes right into lesson four, which is using vibrant colors. So all of the colors that are available to the students that the students have are put out on the palette. And we discuss how to mix really vibrant color. Um, pure color, uh, not um, adding a lot of colors to one color because in doing so oftentimes complementary colors will cross and the colors will become duller. So the subject matter for vibrant color is an interior and this also brings in again not only compositional discussions and how to compose an interior so it's an interesting painting but also again drawing techniques how to accurately put the angles and the perspective down. And we go into that as it is in free online art classes. We go into how to do that through a pencil gauge method. And again, drawing what you see, the video uh, about using a grid is also important for that, that particular technique. So what we do is, what the students end up with often is just really, really nice, vibrant, pure colors with oranges and reds and greens and yellows and blues um, and an interior that they have worked very hard to put in accurately and um, many times the, the result is really So, uh, lesson five is actually dealing with an interior subject matter again in muted color. Many times students can use the same composition if they want, just redo it with a different, very, very muted palette. The colors are grays and browns and blacks and, and, and whites. And, and so what this shows is actually the importance of the color choice so that many times the interior that was done in vibrant colors will look really quite different in not only mood, but shape using muted colors. So this is a, a really good, these two lessons show how important the color palette is for the student. Then we also talk a little bit more about composition and how effective the composition was in their painting that they did. Because um, the last lesson, which is lesson five, 
uh, pertains to personal style. So after these two interiors are done, the vibrant interior and the interior with muted color, Lesson 6 is actually the launching pad for beginning advanced acrylic painting. Because at this point, the students have enough skill and enough proficiency so that they can really comfortably begin to research their personal style. Because advanced painting is really all about personal style, how, how to integrate the skills that the student knows with the way they feel about the world and what they want to express. And then they have to start making decisions as to what kind of style they want to paint in, what interests them, what ignites their imagination, and what inspires them. And there's quite a bit of discussion on that um, on le in Lesson 6. And you can see in free online art classes, too, that this is... So you can see that Lesson 6 is actually all about choosing a personal style. And this brings in the total integrity of the artist so that the student has to choose their own subject matter and they choose subject matter that they prefer doing, whether it would be a self-portrait or a still life or a landscape or an abstract painting. Um, that is up to them at this point. They make decisions on what color palette they want to use and at this stage many students have a kind of proclivity for certain kinds of colors that they want to use. So that's not too hard for a lot of students just automatic to, automatically to launch into the color palette that they prefer. We talk about styles and we also talk about eventually marketing work, which I think is a really important topic to, to begin with at the end of an intermediate six lesson course. Um, there's a lot that can be said about marketing, um, about how to approach a gallery, how to even communicate with other artists, and then also researching other artists. Work. At this point also, the last lesson in the intermediate acrylic painting lessons, lesson six, I also encourage the students especially towards the end of completing their projects, to get together and to talk about each other's work. I feel many times that students at that point are pretty proficient in their painting skills and where they want to go with them. But what maybe they haven't gotten into very much is a group discussion and group critiquing of each other's work. So as they launch into that, I kind of sit on the side and I nudge them into various critiquing techniques, which requires a bit of objectivity and knowledge of things like balance, symmetry, how the composition works, the dynamics of it, how the colors work, what the style is, maybe even how marketable it is, and of course, how they can improve it and how they are impressed with it or not impressed with the work. So it can be a really rigorous process sometimes, and I always remind the students, the critique is something that is somebody else's point of view, and the value of it is to give the students a fresh eye to see their work in a new way and to see how it resonates in the outside world. And in a way, that's a pretty, incredible process because painting at this point is a pretty personal thing for a student so it's almost like the first day of delivering your child to the first day of kindergarten all of a sudden the child is out in the world and there you are the anxious parent so you can see that the end lesson in intermediate is really quite an exciting time it launches students into actually a career of painting if they want. If they just want to increase their skills, maybe not make it a career, they can still go into advanced. But this intermediate is extremely important in the sense that it sets up communication between the students and it allows them to work together as a group 
supporting each other's work, which is really important as well. And because advanced acrylic painting, like in any other advanced class, actually puts a lot more of the responsibility to learning new skills and relating to the world in the student's uh, environment, so that the art instructor in advanced actually kind of recedes a little bit comes in periodically to guide the student, but it isn't as intense or dense art instruction like it is in beginning and intermediate. So ending the intermediate acrylic painting class, I talk to each student individually and ask them if they think that they are ready to continue into advanced. They know what they're up against in advanced. I have drawn a really good profile of what that coursework is, and I'm also going to do a lecture on that. And so I ask them and say, do you feel that your skills are solid enough so that you can go into this and take, take up the reins, so to speak? Now, if you feel that you have some painting skills, and this seems like a good way for your direction to go, I highly recommend intermediate acrylic painting. Um, it's all free on freeonlineartclasses.com. There's a lot of support videos I have in my channel, Swirl of Light on YouTube, probably well over a hundred by now. So there's plenty of good art instruction that I can present to you to get you going into advanced painting. <laughs> good luck.